Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Tonight's tale, Escape from Marywood. Not too long ago, around mid-November of 2011, Konami had finished work on a title known as Escape from Marywood. This particular game was more of an experiment in design and advertising rather than a AAA project, not given any advertising or knowledge to press of any sort, and initially only released in a few locations as a market test. Due to the minimal cost of its development, such an experiment was not at all expensive for the company at first. The game released on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, no Wii version for reasons that will soon be obvious, only in a few select GameStop stores peppered throughout the states of Massachusetts and Maine, included a special code to be entered into their website which would allow direct feedback to the marketing and PR departments. The experiment was an overwhelming failure. Out of the feedback given, approximately 98% of the people who bought and finished it were extremely negative, and in some cases, violently angry. As damage control, the game was pulled from shelves, a complete product recall issued that would return the customer's money at double retail price, as well as hefty donations given to the stores and employees to keep quiet about it. The game stricken from any records and those involved in its development were even given bribes, or threats of termination, and a gag order. Of course, any attempts to ask Konami about the game will just get you denials, and you will get sent across phone trees until you give up. That's why I'm the only one willing to talk about the game. I never gave up my copy for the recall, never signed any NDAs, and thus have not received any sort of silencing bribe, leaving me free to speak as I leaving me free to speak as I wish. Feedback on the game's content notwithstanding, the marketing for Escape from Marywood was absolutely brilliant. There was none, none at all. Not a word of it had ever reached me before finding it sitting on the shelves of my local GameStop. What caught my eye though more than anything was the box art which looked like a chalkboard with a scribble of a weird, human-like creature on it, like a jointed stick figure, although one arm was bloated and claw-like. This creature was the only thing on the box, not even a title across the top, nor on the spine. Hell, the price tag hadn't even been put on it. Curiosity gripped me like a vice. Not knowing what the game was about or even called sent me right to the counter with it in hand, forking over my $60 and jetting home as fast as possible. Starting up the game would be the standard affair. Konami logo, all of that leading to a rather nice menu screen, keeping the chalkboard motif that was on the box cover. There weren't many options to choose from. Being a single player game only, you only had new game, load, and options. After selecting new game, you were immediately thrown into the game after a short, rather haunting jingle. The first thing that the player would notice is the beautiful, surreal, and rather terrifying graphic style. Everything looking as if it were drawn in crayon. The player lost in a forest of black and green, the night sky depicted in red. The second thing one would notice is the white creature from the box right in front of them and charging with a horrific scream. Such an abrupt beginning would lead to quite a few players dying immediately as being touched by the creature resulted in a brutal mauling, made even worse by the game's first person perspective. What you're supposed to do is actually quite clear. If the shock of the creature doesn't make you freeze, you simply turn and flee. The character's sprint, while not unlimited, is swift enough to carry the play for a good 30 seconds or so and will eventually come across a village of poorly drawn huts and stick figures. Upon reaching this village, the creature stops chasing the player and can be heard lazily walking away back into the darkness, its heavy, thumping footsteps slowly receding while the player's character collapses from exhaustion and the screen fades to black. Thankfully, the game auto-saves at this point. When the player regains control, the time of day will have shifted to morning, the red sky now a pleasant blue. The childishly drawn sun will even have a smile on it. 
Walking around the village, the stick figure people will inform the player that the creature is known as Mary, a guardian of sorts who seems to enforce a curfew on the villages of the forest, attacking anyone who leaves their home at night or tries to leave the forest entirely. From here, the player is given quite a bit of freedom, able to buy a sword or even a handgun from the villagers and go off into the woods. I admit the first time that I went out of the village during the day, I nearly had a heart attack as I encountered Mary almost immediately. Thankfully, when the sun is up, Mary will not harm the player. He'll even chat with them. The sun is so nice. Don't look at it directly, though. He'd chirp, all the voices in the game being garbled gibberish. Mostly, Mary's dialogue is either exclamations of how nice the day is, how cute the animals are, or generic advice one would give to a child, such as, don't talk to strangers. While he is pleasant, for lack of a better word, the player is advised to not attack Mary in any way, as he turns immediately hostile and is completely invincible to damage. Getting hit by his massive claw arm results in a rather piercing scream from the player character, as well as the screen starting to rip as if it were paper being clawed at by a bear, until being entirely sliced to ribbons and falling away with YOU ARE DEAD, a sad face emoticon, and an option to continue or quit. However, so long as you do not attack Mary, attempt to go past a certain boundary on the map, helpfully outlined in red, or leave the village at nighttime, the player can pretty much ignore him, although they may also talk to him to get new dialogue, and that will be explained later. Upon reaching the second village, either by following the map or simply wandering about, the player character will come to learn that Mary is indeed invincible, and he can only be killed by any damage that he inflicts upon himself. The player will also be laughed at for asking the likelihood of Mary committing suicide as he is, quote, the happiest thing alive, unquote. In case that last sentence didn't hit you like the brick it is, let me spell it out for you. The objective of this game is to escape the woods by finding a way to make the happiest thing alive kill itself. From here on, the player's duty is to wander the woods, searching for any artifacts scattered around, as well as searching for things called Mary's Happiness Shrines, which are crudely made altars adorned with flowers, trinkets, even candles. The player finds these altars and must destroy them with complete and utter malice, smashing them, ripping the flowers apart, stomping on the sweets, etc. Along the way, they'll have regular enemy encounters, mostly hostile wildlife, bandits with knives, and these strange guys called oxymen who carry guns, and tend to be rather annoying surprises when you get shot in the back. In addition to breaking these altars, the player is encouraged to observe Mary, see which animals he's taking a liking to, or what items he seems fond of, and either killing or destroying them while he is a way or finding a way to do so right in front of him without being seen. This is where Mary's additional dialogue comes in. Talking to him after breaking a few altars will have him talk about an unfortunate accident, but the more the player does to wreck his emotional state, the worse the dialogue gets, to the point that Mary flat out says things like, just please leave me alone. Eventually the player will come across the items necessary to complete the game a teddy bear, a faded photograph, and a lighter. Once the player has these, they may confront Mary by trying to leave the forest and waiting for him to come charging at them as always. This time, however, instead of being killed, which in the case of attempted escape would be instant death via cutscene, a quick time event will appear labeled Present Teddy. Upon doing this, Mary will stop in his tracks, angrily ranting about how he's starting to suspect that you were the one doing these awful things to him. If you wait too long, Mary will attack you and kill you, so instead, the player has to ignore his ranting and press the attack button, which will lead the character to rip off the teddy bear's head. Mary will screech in an agonized fashion, his angry rant turning to one of a child whose pet just died. And from this point, he won't attack the player. The player must then continue pressing the attack button, the sequence of events following being throwing the teddy bear to the ground, 
taking out the photo, setting it on fire, and tossing the flaming photo onto the ripped teddy bear. The entire time, Mary will be screaming, sobbing, saying how he just wanted to make you happy, but the player is to ignore this and continue pressing the button, which will lead to the character screaming insults, telling Mary nobody likes him, that he'd be better off dead, and flat out telling him to kill himself. In the last few lines, simply being, DO IT, repeated again. After a painfully long time telling this creature to die, the weapon select menu will appear on screen, although the option equip will be replaced with offer. From here, the player can choose anything. Giving Mary a sword will lead him to stabbing himself repeatedly, giving him a handgun, he shoots himself in the head, and giving him nothing, he runs into a pack of nearby wolves and lets them devour him. The most painful to watch though by far is giving him the shotgun where the beast will clumsily fumble with it until the barrel is in his mouth and then he will pull the trigger with his normal hand regardless of your choice though the instant mary falls dead the music comes to a halt and the graphics suddenly change going from crude crayon to sudden realism the perspective remains in first person as the player character steps over something that can't be seen and calmly exits the forest, stepping out of the woods onto a highway where a beat up old truck is waiting. This entire time, only the sounds of the footsteps, the opening and closing of the truck's door, and the starting of its engine are heard as the player character begins to drive off. The game then ends with a sudden cut to black, no credits and it boots the player back to the main menu. So stay scary, my wildlings. Remember, if you want a goal enough, we're all capable of monstrous things. And make the most of your nights.